Welcome back to Race Day America. And despite the fact that we have a gray, gloomy day on hand, there's a bright point today in race four. It's a horse named Myositis Miracle. And it has to do with efforts by the Myositis uh, Association to make a difference in finding more out about this disease and finding a cure. And joining us right now to discuss Bob Goldberg of the Myositis Association. Bob, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell us more about what myositis is and why it's important to draw attention to it. Well, myositis is a rare disease that affects about 30,000 Americans. And it usually affects the legs and the arms and the hands. And unfortunately for many of those who have the disease, uh, it affects their quadriceps to the point that they're not able to walk and they gradually deteriorate till they end up in a wheelchair. And Bob, there was a horse uh, a couple of years back named Autism Awareness who won a derby up north, brought a lot of uh, awareness to that disease, autism. How much have you noticed this horse and maybe get, picking up some interest and people asking what this is? Because it's a rare disease. In fact, a lot of people don't even know what it was. I had to ask you basically what it is. What, 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 how much attention has been brought to it by this horse? Well, I appreciate you bringing that up because actually autism was awareness when he was uh, on the derby trail mm -hmm. in 2008 was the reason uh, that I thought it might be an interesting oh. and unique way to draw attention to our disease. So uh, myositis Miracle is the first horse with the uh, word myositis in his name that's running, and so we're gradually hoping to get more attention. We have another horse in, in, who's training at Oakland right now named Stop Myositis, and uh, she is likely to be running soon, and hopefully uh, we'll get some attention when she runs. How much progress has been made in, in finding a cure for this disease in recent years? There has been uh, significant progress just in recent years. Uh, there's a gene therapy trial that's being done at Ohio State, which offers uh, some real potential. And we're hopeful that uh, next year uh, humans will be treated with that. There's some new medications that seem to be effective. So even though the disease has been around for a long time, uh, it's taken quite a while to really develop some drugs and therapies that work for those who have the disease. But it's still an incurable disease. Okay, and we can go back to B. Wayne Hughes of Spendthrift Farm. And he had a relationship with a particular football player who suffered from this disease. Quite a famous one at that, runner-up for the Heisman, Ricky Bell. Uh, what was their relationship and why is... When I was years old, he was one of my favorite players, Bob, Ricky <laughs> Bell. And he should have won the Heisman. He finished second to Archie Griffin, who won it two years in a row. It was a bad vote. He should have won the Heisman. He was affected by this disease, and it cut his life tragically short. Yeah, and uh, I appreciate you saying that. Ricky Bell was an incredible individual. Aside from a, a wonderful football player, uh, he comes from a family that includes Archie Bell of Archie Bell and the Drells. I didn't know that. That's good trivia, yeah, Bob. That's good. Yeah, there's a little something to <laughs> use with your next guest. But, uh, <laughs> but Archie uh, has been helping the organization, and the connection between Wayne Hughes and Ricky Bell is the following. Uh, Wayne is a uh, alumni of USC and has stayed very involved with the school. Would Ricky was there. He helped Ricky uh, through school and, and really stayed very close to him throughout his career. Uh, after Ricky played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for three or four years, the disease affected his legs. That's basically what ended his football career. And at that point, uh, Wayne Hughes was still very close to Ricky. In fact, he put him to work in his business, hoping that Ricky would overcome the disease and get back uh, to you know being able to continue with his life. Unfortunately, Ricky passed away in 1984, a couple years after leaving the NFL. Yeah, Ricky uh, played on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, led them to their first NFC title game. They got beat by the Rams nine to nothing. I, I was I was a Ricky <laughs> Bell fan, but I was a much bigger LA Rams fan, so I was happy by that result. But Ricky Bell was such a good uh, guy too, from all the reports you read and being around at that time. He was just a likable guy, and, and I, you know, the fact that he died so young was so tragic. But maybe it can help draw some attention now because he was very well known in Southern California. I mean, he was famous when USC was rolling in those days. Yeah, oh, he, he was, and uh, I'm from out east, and the entire country, as you know, is very aware of Ricky Bell and those USC tailbacks in those days. But in terms of Wayne Hughes, let me just say that uh, the way this all came about, when I approached uh, about a dozen thoroughbred farms in Kentucky to see if anyone would take an interest, Spendthrift Farm, which is owned by Wayne Hughes, was one of the farms that responded positively, along with Airdrie Stud. And I, I was not aware at the time that, in fact, Wayne Hughes knew of Ricky Bell and knew of the disease. And that's really why Spendthrift chose to uh, help us out. And they've uh, graciously offered to contribute some of the horse's earnings toward the uh, organization to help find a cure. He's How entered in today's fourth race, and Carolyn, he didn't run bad first time at Hollywood Park. It was a big price, and he actually finished pretty well. He's a $370,000 purchase, so maybe we'll cash a ticket and yeah, donate some can, of those winnings there to, you the, go, to the there foundation. You go. How close are we to a cure here? What's been done in terms of research in myositis? Well, we have, uh, the Myositis Association has now funded about $3 million of research. 
and have funded about 30 research projects around the country. Unfortunately, we are not close to a cure. Uh, there are some therapies that will hopefully improve the living conditions of those that have the disease, but it's a disease that, uh, it's an autoimmune disease that goes into remission, uh, does not actually ever leave the person's body. And, um, you know, I, I wish I could say we're on the cusp of a, uh, of a cure, but we're not. It, it's still a lo there's still a long way to go. It's going to take a lot of money, a lot of research dollars. And if everybody who cashes in on My Size Miracle chooses to <laughs> donate to our association, we'll do quite well. I can do that, Bob. That sounds good. We would appreciate <laughs> All it. All right. Well, Bob, thanks so much. And best of luck with My Size Miracle today in Race 4 at Santa Anita. Well, thank you very much. Thanks thank for you. having me. Good to have you here, Bob Goldberg from the Myositis Association. When we come back, we'll go racing. Three minutes to race one at Aqueduct and just nine minutes to the opener at Lowell.